Almost everyone in the United States has a computing device and has access to high-speed internet. There are lots of great things about being on the internet. It has changed our lives. We practically no longer do anything the way we used to due to technology and the internet. With the advent of internet-ready appliances, even going to the refrigerator or washing your clothes will be internet-driven. So what do you risk when you go online? There are privacy risks no matter what device you use. Your smartphone or tablet can be owned electronically by simply receiving and responding to a text message. This means the hacker can see and control your camera to watch you. Your text messages can all be read, your phone calls can be heard, and your passwords all compromised. But it can even happen when you aren't using your phone. Your phone simply has to be turned on once your device is infected and the hacker can listen to your conversations with family and friends and watch you while they do it. The program can be purchased by anyone with $300 or less. Drones can also grab passwords and other information while they hover over you. A drone called Snoopy pretends to be an unsecured Wi-Fi device that then auto connects to your device. Your device broadcasts all the information to Snoopy without the need for a password. It can even trick your laptop, phone, or tablet to turn Wi-Fi back on even if you turn it off. United States Attorney General Eric Holder had several people apply for his tax refund after somehow attaining his social security number. The average password used by most people is either password or one, two, three, four, five, six. Even if the hacker cannot guess your password, most challenge questions used by banks and shopping sites can be deduced from your Facebook page. Social media is how Sarah Palin had her email account hacked when she was running for vice president. Baby announcements in electronic newspapers and social media can be used to apply for social security cards in your child's name from anywhere in the world. Your child's credit can be ruined before their first birthday. Another risk you take isn't a risk you alone will face. By being online, you risk hurting others. If you receive malware on your computer, it can be used to hack into other people's accounts or used as a distributed denial of service attack against innocent people or governments. Russia used infected computers in the United States to attack the country of Georgia in the short war that took place in 2008. Georgia lost the ability to post updates until the war was over and could not move money due to their internet dependent banks being shut down during the attacks. Russia is doing it again today in the Ukraine. 30% of all computers have some form of malware on them. That means there's a good chance that you being on the internet at this very moment is not only risking you in some way, but also risking others. Say what you want about Edward Snowden, but he did blow the whistle on a lot of illegal activity the NSA had been performing against the world and the American people for quite some time. The argument has been that it is legal because of the Patriot Act. Whether or not you agree with it, you may be surprised to know the number one malware attacker against the United States people is the United States government via the National Security Agency. More malware is placed on computers by the NSA on U.S. citizens' computers than any other hacker, cracker, thief, or government. They may not be using it to hack into banks or illegally download media, but they are using it to keep tabs on you. When their malware is discovered, they change it just enough so it will once again go undetected. In 2013, there were three pieces of malware invented every second. That was almost double the amount in 2012. It will likely double again in 2014. There is no chance anti-malware providers will be able to keep up with it. No chance. This is what you risk right now by being connected to the internet.